Welcome back to the program. We're discussing the day's politics now with our political panel here in Canberra, Labor MP Andrew Lee. Thanks for your time, Andrew. And joining us from Melbourne, Liberal MP Kelly O'Dwyer. Thank you and good morning to you, Kelly. Hi, I want to start, hi. Andrew Lee, with reports that the government will try to claw back billions of dollars from superannuation. Is it fair to be digging into people's retirement savings to balance what is almost universal, uh, universally regarded by economists like yourself as a political imperative in balancing the budget rather than an economic one? Uh, well, David, there's going to be lots of budget speculation around between now now and when the mid-year update's announced, most of that speculation will be wrong and that's why we don't tend to comment on the specifics. But let me answer your concern that what we're doing is meeting a political target rather than an economic one. Uh, getting back into surplus is important because it provides us with room to, to move on fiscal policy uh, if there's any further corrections in the world economy. Uh, just as we were Keynesians in the downturn, we took on some debt. Uh, about a tenth of GDP in order to save some jobs, so too we want to be Keynesians in the upswing. But we'll do that by targeting efficiencies, not by targeting jobs. But can you rule out any changes to superannuation, taxation, uh, clawing back dollars for the budget? As I've said, uh, said David, I mean, we don't, we don't get, get into the kind of rule-in, rule-out games, but I'll give you those broad parameters, which is that Labor will not behave as Campbell Newman has done, will not get rid of 14,000 public servants, as he's done, uh, will target efficiencies. So, for example, you saw an announcement this week about cutting back on business travel, making more government reports available online rather than in hard copy. Uh, those sorts of savings, I think, are sensible ones, prudent measures that save money to the taxpayer but don't involve firing people uh, as Campbell Newman has done Ke and as Joe Hockey has promised to do. Kelly O'Dwyer, where should the government be slashing money from to achieve this budget surplus? Should it be doing what the Liberal Premiers in Queensland and New South Wales have done? Well, David, let me make a couple of points in response to Andrew's comments. Uh, first, first point to make is that, in fact, this government has... Uh, has, has fired 3,000 public servants. So for all their talk about being concerned about public servants, um, let's look at their own record. The second point to make is that the final budget outlook that was recently, final budget outcome that was recently released shows a, a hugely deteriorating position in what the government had forecast and what, what actually occurred. Uh, we saw the deficit go from uh, what was forecast to be around $23 billion uh, upwards to 43.7 billion dollars. We saw net debt go from $106 billion to $147.3 billion. On top of all of this debt, we have seen the government make a number of unfunded promises, which amounts to about $120 billion worth. Now, when you add all of that up, $120 billion is about 120 uh, new teaching hospitals. Now, I, I mean, my, my my view on all of this is that uh, the government now desperately needs to try and find some cash and so they're prepared to raid the retirement savings of Australians. That's what we've seen today on the front page of the paper. That's what they're prepared to do, the retirement savings of Australians. We know that Wayne Swan has already not been prepared to rule out a raid on the future fund. So they are going to increase taxes to pay for their unfunded spending promises. So back to my question, though, what, what would you do? What should the government be doing to save this money? Well, well, the government needs to get its spending under control. It keeps making these spending announcements like confetti, you know, throwing them around, and, and yet none of them none of them have any basis in reality. And that's the, that's the real problem here. The government continues to spend more and more. We've seen this government spend $100 billion more than the last coalition government did while in government. Now, that's recurrent spending. That's the spending year on year. And we know that we've got big problems ahead. We've got a number of big problems when you look at the intergenerational generational report, we're going to have less working people for, for people aged 65 and above. So we need to look at how we spend the money. We need to make sure that the money we spend is effective and we need to ensure that the government, when it makes new spending announcements, um, can justify those spending announcements in terms of what it's being directed to and the outcomes it's going to deliver and how it's going to be able to pay for that spending. 
OK, well, Barnaby Joyce has had his leadership ambitions thwarted for now. He was going to try to swoop into the lower house through the seat of Maranoa, hoping that Bruce Scott would retire. Well, Bruce Scott is actually going to recontest the next election. And Barnaby Joyce, in a statement last night, has said that he endorses Bruce Scott, that a pre-selection battle would be an unnecessary distraction at this time in the electoral cycle. Kelly O'Dwyer, are you disappointed that you won't be seeing Barnaby Joyce alongside you in the lower house? Well, look, Barnaby's a fantastic senator for Queensland and uh, he'll continue to do a great job in Queensland. Bruce Scott's also a really fantastic local representative for his area as well in Maranoa. And again, you know, he, he will continue to do a really fantastic job for the people that he represents. I think it's good news all round. Barnaby Joyce was accused of freelancing by several senior members of the coalition, implicitly by the, the leader himself, Tony Abbott. Uh, is this some form of punishment for, uh, for that freelancing, do you think? Has, has Bruce Scott been encouraged to run? Look, I wouldn't read. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't read too much into it. You know, it's clearly a matter that has been determined by the organisation in Queensland. I have no greater insight into that than, than perhaps even you do, David. Andrew Lee, you certainly would have fired up Question Time. Do you? Are you disappointed that you won't be seeing facing off with him across the chamber? Well, Barnaby Joyce, uh, David, has seen his ambitions curtailed for now, but you can see the coalition increasingly moving in the Barnaby Joyce direction. Uh, the, uh, they, they weren't sure for a while whether they supported foreign investment at a cubby station or would prefer to see it go into receivership. Uh, they're having a meltdown over whether they support deregulation of wheat sales uh, or whether they want to back the old system there. Uh, the, the rise of protectionism uh, in the National Party, and I know Kelly is as concerned about this as I am, uh, is something that Barnaby Joyce represents very strongly and I think something that Tony Abbott is probably broadly sympathetic to as, as somebody who has those sort of old DLP tendencies, you know, was worried about the float of the dollar a decade after it had happened, uh, likes to, uh, to, to flirt with protectionists and populists. So so I think that strong Barnaby Joyce influence on the coalition will remain regardless of which house he's in. Kelly O'Dwyer, I'll get your response to that, but also specifically the wheat de deregulation issue in WA. A rift in the coalition seems to be opening up on this with the former Maverick Minister Wilson Tucky threatening to target uh, not just pre-selections but Julie Bishop over this. Should she be worried? Well, uh, when I last looked, Wilson Tucky, while he was a, a member for a long time in the coalition, wasn't currently a member of the parliamentary team. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that, again, you can read terribly much into his comments there. Um, just to take issue with a couple of things, though, that, that Andrew has said. Uh, the coalition is very united. I mean, the only party that is not united is the Labor Party. The only party that continues to have uh, squabbles over who's going to get the top job is the Labor Party. We saw that with Julia Gillard knifing Kevin Rudd. We see that again with Kevin Rudd wanting the top job again. We see that with all of the news reports uh, in the paper over the last week where we see that Kevin Rudd's ambitions have not been dimmed. Lindsay Tanner said that the Labor Party did the wrong thing, uh, they've gone in the wrong direction and that they need to evaluate the direction in which they're heading. They need to be true to Labor values again. So I think the only party who's got serious issues here is the Labor Party who are being led by the Greens. They're in coalition government with the Greens, which is why, as Lindsay Tanner quite rightly points out, they have simply lost their way. Um, the coalition is united. We will get to Lindsay Tanner's contributions in, in just a moment, but I just want to take you back to, to uh, Wheat uh, in, in WA. Should, should Wilson Tucky back off then? Is that what you're saying? Well, well, I think, you know, Wilson Tucky is entitled to express his views as a private citizen, just as anybody is. Um, but, but, and and know, what about Tony Crook then? Proportion. I mean, I know he doesn't sit in the party room, but should he, should he fall into line with with well, what is well, coalition again, I policy? Think you've, I, I think you've just made the, the point, which is he doesn't sit in the coalition party room. So, again, you know, he's entitled to express his views. But the coalition has a, a united position on this. And, uh, you know, as much as the Labor Party might want to try and create an issue, there is none. OK, well, the, the Lindsay Tanner comments over the past uh, 24 hours, the essays, really have caused greater ructions on the other side of politics, uh, the Labor Party. Andrew Lee, what do you make of, of Mr Tanner's contribution? 
David, I'm a, a fan of Lindsay Tanner's in general. I regret never having the chance to serve with him in the federal parliament. But I do think that he's missed some huge achievements of this Labor government. I mean, just over the five years we've been in office, we've apologised to the stolen generation, we've gotten rid of work, cho work choices, we've put a price on carbon pollution and we've moved to a profits-based mining tax. Uh, rebuilt Queensland, started to put the foundations for a national disability insurance scheme, doubled education spending and raised the tax-free threshold to $18,000. And, David, they're only the measures that the Coalition has opposed. But he says... These are important achievements. He says the party is devoid of purpose. How can that be anything other than a direct attack on Julia Gillard? Uh, I think Lindsay Tanner is wrong on that, David. I think the party has strong purpose. Our purpose is uh, building an Australia which, has, uh, which is economically responsible. Uh, that's why we saved those hundreds of thousands of jobs in the global downturn and when you hear people railing in against our 10 percent government debt you should realize that they're also saying we shouldn't have saved those jobs in the global downturn uh, and that, that is an extraordinary achievement I think Lindsay does acknowledge that but I think he could be a little more magnanimous in recognizing the subsequent achievements uh, what we've done with the national disability insurance scheme uh, built from parliamentarians okay. uh, but with the architecture structured by the productivity Commission, I think, was the right policy Kel outcome and the right methodology. Kelly O'Dwyer, this is another gift for your side of politics, isn't it? Well, look, I don't look at it like that. I think uh, Lindsay Tanner is obviously somebody who was part of the gang of four in government. Now, of course, there's the gang of three. And, and I agree with Andrew. It is such a shame that he hasn't been able to serve with Lindsay Tanner. But the reason he's not been able to serve with Lindsay Tanner as a minister is because the second that the Prime Minister, uh, Julia Gillard, knifed the former Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, he decided to bail. He realised that the, the country was absolutely going in the wrong direction. The Labor Party had lost its way. So he bailed. He, he actually voted with his feet. He got out of there. Just, just though, to respond to a couple of the points that were made by, by Andrew, um, you know, claiming, claiming the National Disability Insurance Scheme is, is really quite preposterous and, and you know, I'm, I'm really surprised he can do it with a straight face. If he said that the architecture has been built around what the Productivity Commission said, well, he, he's a couple of billion short. Um, the, the only money that's actually been put in by the government is around about a billion dollars in the last budget. Uh, the, the Productivity Commission said, well, you need a couple of extra billion in order to get the pilot scheme and the, the trial scheme up and running before, of course, you have to put in extra money, which is going to amount to around about $10.5 billion. The government hasn't said where the money's coming from. We said we were happy to work with the government on this really important initiative. They've said that they don't want to actually work with the coalition. Four times our help has been rejected on this. So if you want to talk about people who are playing politics okay. on these sorts of really important national issues, it is, okay. it is the Labor Party and it is can the Greens. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I've got to cut you off. We are out of time. I know you want to say something, but we're, we're right out of time. Kelly O'Dwyer, Andrew Lee, appreciate your time today. Thanks for your company. Thanks, David. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Thanks, Kelly. Thanks David.